We can never tell these days with this virtual technology what all is going on with those who are worshiping with us. And we are grateful for all of those who are worshiping with us, whether they are worshiping with us simultaneously live right now, or whether they are worshiping with us days and weeks later. We are grateful for the opportunity, and we are grateful for the youth with which God has blessed this church and the gifts that he has given them and that they are here with us tonight. We are grateful for um, the faithful service of Casey and Meredith who couldn't be here tonight and the, the diligence and the service that they have given to our youth throughout the course of this pandemic. I was going to be really sort of mischievous and be like, great job, Casey, thank you. We'll just see how many people I could confuse, but decided against that. Anyway, so especially when the lights were still dim. That would, uh, anyway, so the Ascension is one of those services where when we look at it, we can go, oh, yeah, this is what it is. This is where the church acknowledges that. 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus went out from Jerusalem with the, with the apostles, with the disciples, and he ascended back into heaven. We acknowledge this in the, in the Apostles' Creed. He ascended into heaven. He'll come again to judge the quick and the dead, the living and the dead. He's going to come back and he's going to judge us because he went back into heaven. And it's really kind of challenging to draw something out of that. I mean, we know that he said, hey, go back in Jerusalem and tarry there until I send my Holy Spirit. And you're endued with power from on high. Tarry is one of those great words because it's a, it's a biblical phrase that when you say it, it conveys that meaning that you just can't get when you use the modern equivalent, right? It's like, let not your heart be troubled, right? You tell somebody to chill and they get really offended. You say, let not your heart be troubled and they, they kind of calm down a little bit, right? You say, just go wait there. And I'm like, I don't want to wait. You say, Terry. And you're going to get at least a couple seconds of waiting while they try and figure out what you mean, right? Okay. So, Jesus says, tarry in Jerusalem until I send my Holy Spirit. Wait there in Jerusalem. And we know that 10 days later, we have Pentecost. So we're on the clock, guys. 10, minute, 10 days until Pentecost. Now maybe you're thinking 10, 10 minutes and I'm on the clock, right? But we have 10 days until Pentecost. But there's got to be something more to it than that. There's got to be something more than this being the idea of like a biblical stopwatch, right? There has to be something more than this is the feast where we acknowledge that it's 10 days until Pentecost. Because that's not really that significant. That's not that impressive. And it's got to be more than this is the feast that tells us where Jesus went, okay? It's got to be something more significant than that. And I know that right now, there's a lot of us who's been through some hard times over the last two months, over the last 10 weeks, right? Because we've been going through a season that's been a real challenge for everybody, right? I know that none of you who are here wanted to spend the last semester of your school year at home. Right? Now, granted, yeah, it wasn't horrible, but you wanted to spend it with your friends. You wanted to be able to go to your sports games and your cheerleading activities and see your friends and do all those things. And even those who were homeschooled, they've been a little too homeschooled lately because everything's been closed, right? I mean, there's homeschooled, and then there, you're not allowed to leave your home homeschooled. And it's not supposed to be that way. And the adults who are in the room, they're all saying yes and amen. Our college kids, 
You know, they might have signed up for one online class. They didn't want all of their classes online. And our, our young adults who have jobs, they didn't want their jobs to be quite what they've become, right? This is not how it was supposed to have been. And I'm sure that some of you have gone, man, I really need some prayer here. I really need some help. And there's something really comforting and soothing about getting somebody to pray for you. I hope that at some point in time, you said, hey, I'm in a bad spot. I'm going to call a friend, and I'm going to ask for prayer. I'm going to say, hey, I'm in a dark place right now. I want you to pray for me. I know that in your weekly youth events, Mr. Casey has been like, okay, let's do prayer requests. What can, what can we pray for? What do you guys need help with? Who do you know that needs prayer? Right? Now, don't get me wrong, I don't get like reports, I don't get like the email, okay, here's what everybody's prayer requests are. That's not how it works. But I just know that since they're people of prayer, they're gonna say, okay, what do you need prayer with? And there's something really helpful even just knowing that somebody's praying for you. There's something great about that. There's something really soothing about knowing you've got that grandmother that's praying for you or that crazy aunt that's praying for you, right? There's something wonderful about knowing that you're on the prayer chain. And there is something incredible about the communion of saints that we mention every time we pray the Nicene Creed. Because we believe that when we die, we don't just stop and we don't just end, but we go to heaven and we continue on in the church. In fact, our worship here on earth is to get us used to worshiping in heaven so that when we get there, it's not so crazy. We're not like, whoa, what in the world is all this? There's candles and there's incense and there's, I don't understand any of this. No, this is supposed to be a foretaste of what's going on there. And there's people praising God and there's music. That's what this is all about. There's people praying. And we say when we celebrate the Eucharist that we join with the angels and the archangels and all the company of heaven. And we believe that when one of our company passes on, they pass on to begin worshiping, not here on earth, but in heaven. And they join with that great company of believers who've already gone before. And they begin praying for us and interceding for us in heaven. And that's incredibly comfortable. That's incredibly encouraging. But I tell you, even more than that, when Jesus went to heaven, he began praying for us. And that's not just some, like, silly platitude that we say to make people feel better. That's what Paul said. Amen. Okay? That's what he said. And I think he really liked making people feel better. But when he needed to, he didn't mind making people feel bad. If they were doing something wrong, he had no problems sticking it to them. But in Romans chapter 8, he said, Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at God's right hand, who also makes intercession for us. So Jesus Christ rose from the dead, defeated death, walked with his disciples for 40 days, and then rose victorious off the ground and went to heaven, not having died again. And he sat down at the right hand of God. Did he kick his feet up? Did he start watching Super Bowls from time way beyond because he's beyond time and could do that? No. He began praying for us. He began interceding, literally going in between for us. 
That's what he began doing. The author of the epistle to the Hebrews tells us, similarly, that he is also able to save to the uttermost, to the ultimate ends, those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Hear that again. Jesus is able to save to the extreme ends those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for him. That's what he does now. He has conquered death. He said what he needed to to the disciples and the apostles. He went to heaven. He sat down at the right hand of God. And now he prays for us. How incredible is that? That is one thing to have your, your grandmother or your mom. There's something incredibly powerful about having a mama that's praying for you. There's something incredibly powerful about having a grandma that's praying for you. You've got Jesus praying for you. That's even beyond your mama and your grandma put together. Jesus is praying for you. Think about that. That's what it means that Jesus has ascended into heaven. He's ascended into heaven. He sits down at the right hand of the Father, and he's praying for you. Now, okay, I know that I have moments where I'm like, you know, I've prayed for things, and, you know, it hasn't quite worked out like I wanted. You know, and we can be as, as joking about that or we can be as serious about that as we want to get. Like, you know, let's be honest, I'm still waiting for my Lamborghini. Okay? Yeah. Then again, if God were to give me that Lamborghini, he'd have to give me the full-time physical therapist to get me in and out of the Lamborghini. Because <laughs> the knees aren't what they used to be. Okay? However, if we're going to be serious, we can talk about the people who are sick. We can pe talk about the people who have died in the sea. We can talk about the people who have lost their jobs. And we pray for them, and we pray for them, and we pray for them. Sometimes we pray for people who have been sick and they haven't gotten better. Sometimes we pray for people who have been sick and they've died. What about that? And God has really only... Three answers. Yes, not now, and I have something better. Now that's really, really hard to hear in the light of the fact that people are dying. But hear what Jesus' death means. When we know Christ, we don't face death as the ultimate end. It is just a gateway to heaven. There's actually classic Christian songs that praise death as the gateway to heaven. There's songs that talk about death as being gentle because God walked that way himself and conquered. Death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? God has something better for us. When we don't have our prayers answered, the answer is not now, but I have something different for you, something better. Because listen to what God says. Listen to what Jesus says. Three times in the last supper, he says, Whatever you ask in my name, that the Father, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Whatever I ask in my name, he will give you. And then in the gospel, he says, Jesus says to us, how many of you Having a father will ask of him to give you a piece of bread and he'll give you a rock. 
Or how many of you will ask your father for a fish and he'll give you a serpent? Nobody. If you, having sinful fathers, know how to give good gifts, how much more will your father in heaven give you good gifts? Especially when Jesus is asking for them. Now look, this doesn't mean that Jesus is a genie in a lamp. And you can be like, oh Jesus, I want, rub your little lamp, and Jesus is going to give you something. That's not how it works. It's not. Because the best thing that Jesus can give you is a heart that longs after him and a desire to be holy. But this is what the ascension means. We've got Jesus praying for us. We've got Jesus interceding for us. We've got Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father saying, Dad, I want a fish. Don't give me a serpent. These people need this. They might think that they want this, but what they really need is this. Give them what they need in my name. And that's the glory of the ascension. That's the glory of this day that we acknowledge right here. That our Father drew his Son back up into heaven, sat him down at his right hand, and now our Lord is interceding. He's praying for us. It's better than all the moms and all the grandmas praying for us because we got them praying for us too. They're praying for us and they're praying right along with Jesus. And that is a mighty army of prayer warriors who are praying for us and our Lord and Savior is at the head. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, this is Father Scott Loco with Church of Messiah. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and you got something out of it, please click the like button below. And also, you can click the subscribe button to get notifications in your inbox when we post other videos in the future. You can click the little bell below and you'll get uh, notifications also. So do that and uh, we'd appreciate it. So thanks. God bless you. We appreciate it. Uh, pray for us and we'll be praying for you. God bless you.